In this video, we're going to learn how to clean text data on Python. Just a quick recap though, recall that we said cleaning text data essentially involves transforming raw text into a format that's suitable for textual analysis or indeed sentiment analysis. And we said that formally, it essentially involves vectorizing text data, i.e. going from a blob of text to a somewhat relatively more structured uh, bag of words or a list of words or tokens of words. Further recall that we said cleaning text is a sort of three-step process where we start by removing numbers, symbols, and all non-alphabetic characters, then move on to harmonizing the letter case. So for instance, ensuring that all words are lowercase, and finally removing the most common words, i.e. removing stop words. Now thankfully, Python makes this entire process incredibly easy. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in our Jupyter Notebook. So here we are in a brand new Jupyter Notebook. And the first thing you'll notice, of course, is that there is already some code uh, on here. So in this case, I've just imported uh, some of the modules that we're going to be working with. So of course, we need OS because we're going to be working with some files. The only reason we've imported random is because we're literally going to be choosing one file from all of the MDNA files that we've got uh, randomly. Now, stop words for the English language are actually built into uh, Python's Natural Language Toolkit uh, Framework, or NLTK. And so to import that, you just want to type in from nltk.corpus, uh, import stop words. And this will then allow us to later pull the set of stop words for the English language. Importantly, if this is the first time you're ever importing stop words from LTK, then you might see an error. And that's likely because you don't actually have some of the core files that NLTK needs in order to be able to import stop words. And so to overcome that issue, what you want to do is firstly import NLTK and then just type in NLTK.download and put in stop words as the argument in there in single or double quotes. And that will then download the core files that's needed uh, to then be able to import stop words from NLTK.corpus. Okay, and the last thing is this random seed and I've just passed in one and all this is going to do is ensure that the random number that we get in just a bit uh, to choose the MDNA file randomly well that random number is the same number that you would see uh, if and when you run uh, this Jupyter notebook locally on your computer so let me just go ahead and run this to import these packages. Uh, and then the next thing we've got here is code that you're hopefully already familiar with, because this is basically code that you've seen when we explored the MDNA uh, or text data set. So we're literally just listing all of the MDNA files that's inside the MDNA folder, uh, which in turn is inside the data folder. And then we're just getting rid of the uh, .ds store cache file. So let me just run that, uh, and now we're sort of good to go. Now, the first thing we need to do, of course, is to choose a file uh, that we're going to be working with. Uh, and in this particular case, I just literally want to work with a random file. So firstly, I'm going to get a random number. And so I'm going to say random uh, file uh, IDX, short for index, uh, is equal to random. So we're going to call the random module. And then we're going to say dot rand int, which is going to get a random integer between one and the len of MDA files, right? So basically, we're just going to get a random number between one and the total number of MDA files that we've got. And we're going to store that as random file IDX, right? So let me just hit shift enter. Uh, and if we call random file uh, IDX, then you'll see that it's literally just a number. In this case, it's 276. And you should see the same value, even though it's random, as long as you set random.seed to one uh, up here. Okay, and now all we're going to do is we're going to open the file that's at index 276 in MDA files. So if I just call MDA files and then pass in random underscore file underscore IDX here, then this is going to pull the MDA file that's at index 276, which just happens to be this file right here. But now we actually want to open this file so that we can get the blob of text that's inside it. And so we're going to say with open. And then we're going to pass in the entire path to this file. right? So remember that this file is stored inside the MDA folder, which in turn is stored in the data folder, which of course is stored in the master directory. right? So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to copy this entire path. So the dot dot uh, forward slash data forward slash MDA. We're going to put that in quotes here. And then once we're in this MDA folder, we want to open this file. So we can actually do this by using f strings. 
And so I'm going to put a little f over here, which is essentially going to implement f strings inside these uh, set of double quotes. And so what I'm going to do is open a set of curly brackets here, uh, which is essentially the f string part of this uh, sort of string, if you like. And now we can essentially pass in some code in here. And specifically, of course, we just want this code here, this MDA files, uh, random file IDX, which is literally just going to pull this string, which relates to this specific file, right? So if I just pass this over here, what's going to happen is we're literally going to open uh, this entire file. So we're going to open that file and we're going to temporarily store that as file and then say colon and then hit enter to move to the next line. And so now what we've done is we've opened this file, right? So we're now inside the file. And what we want to do is to get the text that's inside this file. And to do that, we're going to say MDA text is equal to file dot read. Right. And what this is going to do is once it's opened the file, it's going to read all of the text that's inside that file. And then we're going to extract the text that's inside that file and store that text as a new variable called MDA underscore text. So let me just go ahead and run this. And if we now call MDA text, you can see that we've got all of the text that's inside that file. And there's actually quite a lot of text in here. Um, but you can see that this is now all of the text that relates to that specific uh, file. Okay, and now that we've got this blob of text, of course, what we want to do is get rid of the dollar sign, for instance, get rid of the numbers, get rid of the parentheses, get rid of uh, full stops and commas and colons and, and all of the other punctuation marks that are uh, that are in this document. And of course, that seems like it's quite a lot of work, but um, actually Python makes this really uh, easy. So the first thing we want to do is to convert this blob of text into a uh, list of just uh, a variety of elements, right? So what we're going to do is rather than have this blob of text as a string, we're going to have a list where each and every element uh, is just stuff that's inside this text blob, but separated by white space. Right, so think back to the approach we took when we explored the MDNA data set. We were splitting strings based on underscores. Uh, and now what we're going to do is split this entire string based on white space. And then we're going to store uh, all of those elements as a list. And we're going to store that as a separate object. I promise you this actually only sounds complicated because it's incredibly easy to implement. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say words is equal to MDA text dot split. And that's literally all we need to do. So remember that the default uh, split type in the split method is white space. So you could specify white space, but you don't really need to because that's the default anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Shift Enter to run that. And if we now call words, we've now separated all of this blob of text up here based on white space so that we're now moving away from just a blob of text to something that's somewhat structured uh, as a sort of list or bag uh, of words. But importantly, of course, this is not just words because we also have numbers uh, punctuation marks and symbols and what have you not. So we want to get rid of that. And of course, that's incredibly easy on Python. So we're going to say alphabetic only to so just removing everything that's non alphabetic. We're going to say that is equal to word for word in words if word dot is alpha. And all this is going to do is for each word in words, right? So remember that words is literally just a list of a bunch of elements where each element was separated on white space from this blob of text. And so we're going to go into each and every element or for each and every word in that list of words. And then we're going to say if that word is alphabetic, right? So if it's not a number, if it's not a uh, dot, if it's not this date, if it's not a punctuation mark, if it is alpha, i.e. if it is alphabetic, then and only then take that word and store it in this list, which we're going to call alphabetic only. So let me just go ahead and run that. And if we now call alphabetic only, then you can see that all the numbers that were up there, right? So let me just put this uh, over here. So you can see firstly that CIK number has gone. Um, you know, sick with the colon has gone. And so we've got rid of every single thing that's not an alphabet, right? We've got rid of the numbers, we've got rid of the symbols of so the dollar currency or any other currency that might be in there. We've got rid of all the punctuation marks and so on and so forth, right? So we now literally have a bunch of words inside uh, this list object, which we're calling 
alphabetic only. So that essentially means that we've now finished uh, step one of the text cleaning process, right? Because we've got rid of all of the non-alphabetic uh, terms. The next thing we want to do is to make sure that we have a consistent uh, case. And so what we're going to do is convert every single word that's in here into lowercase, right? And you can see, of course, that a lot of them are in fact lowercase already. However, you can see that there are in fact a lot of other words which are title case or indeed, you know, uppercase. So we're going to convert all of these to lowercase. And to do that, we're going to say lowercase only. And again, we're going to use some list comprehension. So now we're going to say word dot lower for word in alphabetic only. Right? So what this is going to do is it's going to go into every single word that's currently inside the alphabetic only list and it's going to convert that string or convert each element which just happen to be strings to lowercase, right? So that's what this dot lower argument here is going to do. And it's going to do that for every single element or every single word inside alphabetic only. So let me just go ahead and run that. And if we now call lowercase only, then you can see that every single word in there is now lowercase, right? So we now have a consistent uh, case across all words inside this list. And that takes care of step two of the uh, text cleaning process. Now, the only thing we need to do is to get rid of the stop words, right? Or the most common words in the English language, like or, or to, or by, and the, and so on and so forth. And of course, that is also pretty trivial and pretty easy on Python. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all of the stop words for the English language, right? So we're going to say stop words underscore NLTK is equal to set stop words dot words and we're going to pass in English here. Okay, now what's going on over here? So of course, firstly, we're creating a new variable called stop words NLTK. And this is going to be a set. So we're not going to have any duplicates. And the set is going to include this thing right here. So what is the stop words? Well, if you recall, at the very start of this, we imported stop words from NLTK.corpus. So now we're just calling that stop words um, object, if you like, and from there specifically, we're getting all of the words or all of the stop words for the English language. And so now if I just hit shift enter and then call stop words NLTK, you can see that we now have the most commonly used words in the English language, right? So him, himself, I, if, in, into, and so on and so forth, right? So these are all of the words that you'll find, uh, you know, in pretty much any sort of English document. Uh, and you'll find these words being used quite extensively. And so now we want to get rid of all of the stop words that are inside our lowercase only list, right? And I'm just going to copy this lowercase thing right here. And so to do that, we're going to say cleaned words, right? Because this is now the final stage of our text cleaning process. So this will actually be the list of cleaned words that we can then work with. So we're going to say word for word in lowercase only if word not in stop words NLTK. So what's going on over here? So firstly, of course, we're creating a new variable. We're calling it cleaned words. And this includes every single word that's inside the lowercase only list if and only if that word is not in this stop words uh, NLTK set. So in English, what we're saying essentially is we're going to get all of the words that are currently inside the lowercase only uh, list if that word is not a stop word. And you know, from a coding standpoint, of course, uh, the new command that we're using here, which you might not have seen, uh, is this not in. So what this is doing is it's checking each and every word that's inside this uh, lowercase only list. And it's saying, well, OK, so I'm looking at this word performance. Is performance in the stop words NLTK uh, set or object? No, it's not. So because it's not in the stop words NLTK, I'm going to store that word in this list called cleaned words. right? And then it goes to another word like, for instance, or, and it says, well, hey, is this word in the stop words NLTK set? Well, yes, it is. And you know, I'm not going to bother trying to find it, but it will be in here. Actually, this is alphabetic anyway, so you can actually see it here. So or is actually in stop words NLTK. And so when it gets to this word, this or inside the lowercase only list, it's going to say, well, hey, this word is in stop words NLTK. And so because it is in stop words NLTK, it's not going to store that word in this cleaned words list. So cleaned words will only include words if and only if they are not in the stop words NLTK um, set object. Right, so let me just go ahead and run this now. And if we now called cleaned words, 
then you can see that it's got all of the words that were there previously, except for the most common words, right? So you're not going to see or, you're not going to see the, you're not going to see it, and so on and so forth. In other words, we've now finished the entire text cleaning process uh, for this specific file. Now, just to show you the impact of our cleaning, right? So if I call len of words, and remember that words um, was the first object that we created after we read in the text, right? So we read in the blob of text, and then we stored each space separated element uh, in this words object, this words list. So if I call len of words, then we can see how many elements were in the file to begin with, and we can see that that's 26,811, right? Now, importantly, this is not all words, right? Because it does actually include dates, it does include numbers, and so on and so forth. But now let's take a look at len of cleaned words. So the number of words we have after having cleaned all of that text uh, data, where you can see that that's now 12,542. By removing everything that's non-alphabetic, and by removing all of the most common words, we've managed to remove over half of the stuff that was in that blob of text, right? So basically, we've got rid of most of the non-essential stuff, and we're now just left with a core set of words uh, that we can actually use to estimate sentiment. All right, hopefully all of this makes sense. In summary, we learned that cleaning text involves transforming raw text into a format that's suitable for textual analysis. So of course, we learned that we can remove all of the numbers and symbols and non-alphabetic characters by using the dot is alpha method. And we saw that we can harmonize letter cases across all words using the dot lower method. And finally, we saw that we can remove stop words or the most common words in the English language by simply using the not in uh, approach. Hopefully all of this makes sense. If any part of this video is not quite clear, please watch it again before moving on any further. That's enough from me for now. Have a go at the quiz, and I'll see you in the next video.